Hello, I'm Master Kittel. Welcome to the Cycling Day. A little something different today on episode 5 of Tech Tuesdays. Rolling resistance. It is a b it slows us down, making us work harder to reach the speeds we want. Aerodynamics can help us get faster for less, but that's another video for another day, as it's a little bit more complicated. So we're going to cover the science of rolling resistance and go over the best ways for you to drop that rolling resistance to go faster for less. First off, what is rolling resistance? To put it simply, it is the force resisting the motion of the object that is moving, such as in this case, a bike wheel. And the reason why we need the least amount to help us ride quicker is from the fact that when there is too much force resisting the motion of the wheel, the rider must overcome some extra watts to create the motion of the wheel, thus creating locomotion of the bike. So in theory, we lower rolling resistance, we're not only saving energy, we can perhaps reach speeds of 20 miles per hour by using as much as 200 watts rather than 300, provided you are already aerodynamically optimised at this point because your aero profile will always be a priority as a drag slowing you down is all you, the rider. But you certainly will make a difference in manipulating your bike's wheels rolling resistance to suit you. So how can we do that? Well before I start, we'll take a 7 second break to let you subscribe to the channel. And... Time's up. Now then. There are four different ways we can do this. Each one has its own level of price tag on it. So we'll start with the one that you can do right now for no money at all. Unless you haven't got a bike pump, which you really should. If you haven't, then, well, go and get one. So the first one, of course, is tyre pressure. Yes, if you're neglecting to pump your tyres up regularly, this could be the reason why somehow you're slower than you were the other day because air will always escape your wheel over time quicker than you might realize as well and this is the case for which in the tube you also use regardless though you should always pump up your tires every time to the recommended pressure when you go out for a ride because someone who has pumped their tires up to let's say 100 psi and someone who has 90 psi in there the difference may seem small in pressure but the feel of resistance will be completely noticeable the next thing will require you is some bit of money, but this will be considered the most ban for your buck way to get faster, as many would say, and that is buying better inner tubes. It makes sense that the inner tube would affect your running resistance the same way as the pressure does. So with standard butyl tubes, you may get the most resistance, but if you went to a higher quality racing style inner tubes, that will help you lower resistance while maintaining a high degree of puncher resistance at the same time as well. You can always save way more watts with other options, just bear in mind Mind, they may be fragile as you think as well, such as latex tubes, which are popular amongst the time trialist community as they can save you up to 30 watts or maybe even more. It depends really on the brand that you get. You can pick these up for about 15 to 20 pounds, which is definitely a lot of money for inner tubes, but once you try them, you definitely will see a difference, and I can guarantee you that personally. The other option will require you a little bit more money and that is tyres but I recommend this option as well because they certainly do make a difference such as when I changed my regular Continental tyres to the Continental GP5000s which are considered the best clinchers out there for lowering your rolling resistance while maintaining a great puncher resistance at the same time and I can definitely tell you the difference is very noticeable so if you've got £90 to spare get yourself a pair of these tyres you won't regret it. Okay, so those last three are likely what the common person with limited cash will probably do. But the final option is a way more expensive one and also a bit more risky, and that is going tubeless. Like the other options, you will be using clinchers, but what about going full tubeless? with your wheels. Well, it is by far the most noticeable difference in decreasing the rolling resistance due to, of course, the lack of an inner tube as the tyre is sealed within the wheel. Of course, there are other benefits as well, like using less tyre pressure for comfort and even getting better grip as well. So that'd be good. But what happens if there is a puncher on these wheels? Well, this is the reason why pros use them, because a team will always be there ready for a spare wheel to be replaced immediately. Now, unless you're Scrooge McDuck or Elon Musk, then I doubt you'll be able to sustain this long term but in the end just go for what is the best option for you everyone is completely different and has different budgets and has different needs so just go with your instinct on what you think is best for you and so our first little lecture of tech tuesday is over i'm afraid guys so you know the drill like and subscribe to the cycling Dane extra channel and of course 
most importantly subscribe to the cycling dane main channel where we give most of the commentaries of the races and also analysis of races and all the kinds of videos all centered around racing as a whole and so guys that's it for me and merry christmas and as always have a nice day